We are here to bring a new type of news show. New insights, new styles, and new topics every day. We are News Generation. Bring news just for you. It's Tuesday, August 6th here in Seoul. I'm Song Yujin, and you're watching News Generation. Today, we're joined by Cho Yeonu. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday, and long Tuesday. time no see. Long time no see. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and Fabio Gonzalez. Yes, yes, lovely to be here. Lovely to have you back. <laughs> now, both are here to speak on behalf of those in their 20s and 30s. Now, as usual, we're going to start with our news feed, which covers different hashtags and news items that have been trending online. As more people in Korea head to the beach at this time of year, there is a growing concern among visitors and that's jellyfish. The most commonly spotted species, Nomura's jellyfish, can sting multiple people at once due to its numerous tentacles. Stings from this highly toxic jellyfish can cause red polka dots and whip-shaped scars on the skin. According to the National Institute of Fishery Science, the number of Nomura's jellyfish in the waters around Jeju and the south coast has surged dramatically from just 0.3 per hectare last year to 108 per hectare this year. Moving on to the domestic stock market, South South Korea's benchmark Kospi stock index at the Monday session at 2,441.55, sliding 8.8%, its biggest percentage fall since October 2008. During the session at 2.14 p.m. Korea time, circuit breakers, which halt trading of stocks and derivatives for 20 minutes, were activated for the first time since 2020. These trade curves are put in place when the index falls or rises more than 8%. Finally, South Korea has set its minimum wage for next year at 10,030 Korean won, which is approximately 7 US dollars and 40 cents. The Minimum Wage Council announced this on Monday, marking the first time the country's minimum wage has surpassed 10,000 won since the system was introduced 37 years ago. This represents a 1.7% increase or an increase of 170 won from this year's rate of 9,860 won. So, for those unfamiliar with the process, how does the Korean government actually determine the wage for the upcoming Year. So yeah, in Korea, the minimum wage is set by the Minimum Wage Commission uh, under the Ministry of Employment and Labor that consists of 27 commissioners representing the employers, employees, and the public interest. Um, these commissioners then convene and deliberate next year's minimum wage level, uh, which is then voted upon and submitted to the ministry. Um, and after a 10-day objection period where uh, the workers or the representatives um, can object to the proposal, the minimum wage is finalized and announced, which takes into effect on January 1st the next year. Uh, according to the ministry, this year actually marked the first time in four years where no such objection was raised. Mm, I see, which led to the decision of 10,030 Korean won of a Korea's minimum wage in the year of 2025. Now, Fabio, I also understand that uh, Spain has a minimum wage system, yes. right? So can you tell us how this is decided? Is it similar to Korea? And how much is the minimum wage in Spain this year? So the minimum wage system in Spain is quite similar with Korea. Mm. And basically the trade unions and the employers associations are involved in the consultation and negotiation process. However, the big difference is that in Spain, the final decision is made solely by the government. Mm. That is the biggest decision. And also it is decided annually and stipulated on a monthly basis. And to give some numbers, basically the payment that um, a regular Spanish worker with a minimum wage would get uh, would be divided in 14 payments. Mm -hmm. So in 2024, that would be around 1,134 euros per month. So that's basically around 1.6 million won or roughly $1,240 <laughs> per month, US dollars. And with a maximum of 40 weekly hours and nine daily hours as a maximum, that means that the Spanish worker should get at least 12,000 Korean won by hour, by law. Wow, you seem really good at math, Fabio. Not at all. <laughs> but, you, but you definitely did your homework. <laughs> a little bit. Right, so 12,000 Korean won, around 12,000 Korean won in Spain, and for next year here in Korea, 10,030 Korean won. And that was our news feed for this Tuesday. So we're going to move on to our main discussion of the day now by taking a look at the screen. Here in Korea, students are in the middle of summer vacation. After a semester filled with classes, assignments, and exams, they are enjoying a well-deserved break from school. During this time, students often try to make the most of their days, doing things they don't always have time for during the semester. Some relax at home, learn a new skill or language, or go on trips. Interestingly, more students in Korea are choosing to work instead of just taking a break. 
So it's been quite a while since I graduated from university, but today both of our panelists are students. They are studying at university. So I want to first start off by asking you, Hyunwoo, how are you spending your summer break? Yeah, to be completely honest, I feel like this summer break has kind of been a break in name only. Not a uh, real break. Not <laughs> a real break, yeah. It's been really nice to you know get a break from classes and submitting assignments, of course, but I've been pretty busy working at my school during the weekdays. Oh. Um, but yeah, I, I do always appreciate the fact that, you know, even if I work, I can relax kind mm. of without a worry during the weekends, though. Mm. Mm. Because you're taking a break from all the assignments and the tests, assignments. right? Yeah, that's exactly oh. right. Mm -hmm. Right. So then how are you spending your summer vacation, Fabio? Well, my first priority is just trying to survive this killing heat. Oh, it's <laughs> super hot. <laughs> it's super hot in Korea right now. And I also realized that graduate school doesn't really have a limit in summer. Oh. So I'm basically doing some extra classes. I'm also doing a little bit of work and trying to travel and explore new regions in Korea. Mm. Well, both of our panelists are having a summer break, I guess. <laughs> kind and, of. <laughs> right. And as we briefly mentioned earlier in our VCR, it seems that more students here in Korea are actually choosing to work during their summer break. So is this true, Hyun And I think you can relate to this more because you just mentioned that you're currently working during the weekdays at your school. Right. It, uh, it is. And I think it is actually true looking at the statistics. Um, a recent survey found that 8 in 10 college students actually you know, currently work over the summer break Wow. even during these hot weather conditions. Uh, the survey found that the most popular reason for working was to save or invest extra money at 57%, mm -hmm. followed by saving up to travel domestically or abroad at 30%, to treat themselves at 29%, and to prepare gifts or pocket money for the parents at 15%. Mm, well, a lot of different reasons why university students here in Korea are working part-time jobs during their summer vacation. Now, Hyunwoo, this may be kind of like an obvious question for you, but I want to ask you once again, besides work, working right now at your school during the weekdays. Do you have any other experience working at a part-time job during your break? So yeah, um, I'm actually working full-time at the moment at my school, George Mason University, Korea, as a student intern doing admissions work, you know, mm. helping staff members oh. and admitted students out. You're doing very important work I am now, doing so. important work, <laughs> at least I like to think I'm doing uh, important work. And personally, you know, I found that having a semi-steady income working um, is really helpful right, yeah, right. to save up money for any future plans that you might have as a student. Um, and many of my friends are also working part-time um, during the break at cafes, for example, or restaurants, or tutoring for younger students mm -hmm. is also a very popular one. Oh. Um, like the recent survey found, uh, they use that money either to build up their income or you know, to save up for travel. Hmm, right. So Hyunwoo is currently a university student in Korea. Right. Now let's talk about how it's like in other parts of the world, Fabio. Uh, did you also have a part-time job when you were a university student in Spain or what about your friends in Spain? Well, you see, I think I kind of relate with what Hyunwoo said. There's a lot of reasons why uh, Spanish students also decide to do part-time jobs. And according to a study made by the Autonomous University of Barcelona, two out of three college students in Spain try to find balance between the part-time job and also their studies. Mm -hmm. So that means that I, even, even if it's like vacations or if it's like during the semester, a lot of people try to balance both lifestyles. Mm -hmm. In my case, I was very lucky because my parents did finance all of my uh, student fees and all of my life as a student, basically. But then at the end of my um, undergraduate years, mm -hmm. I did start working a little bit. And now that I've come to Korea, I am fully independent economically. Oh. And that means that, you know, having a part-time job is definitely helpful to cover most of the expenses. Mm, right, right, definitely. And so it's it seems that it's kind of like a fact that more young people, not only here in Korea, but around the world, are having a part-time job um, during their summer vacation. So let's now talk about what kind of types of part part-time jobs are popular among the younger ge generation starting from here in Korea and is there a difference from the past? Yeah, I think there have been, you know, quite a few noticeable changes compared to the past. Um, an article published in 2014 by Financial News found that college students back then prioritized gaining valuable career-related experience or mm. doing fun and unique jobs when looking for part-time work. Um, these days, surveys have shown that the most popular places to work for students are places like cafes, government offices, or movie theaters. Mm. Um, I think that shifting, you know, I think that reflects the shifting needs and wants of students and people that look for places with appropriate wage levels, mm. but also relatively stable or comfortable working conditions. And good air conditioning, good especially air conditioning. during <laughs> this scorching weather. Right.
weather. <laughs> now back to you, Fabio. You've been living in Korea for about a year now, exactly right? Exactly one year. Right. So I think that you've had your time to explore and take a look around mm -hmm. Korea and also campus life here in Korea because you previously appeared on our show talking about university exactly. life, right? So I want to ask you, are there any part-time jobs that mm -hmm. you, you saw that seemed really interesting or you wanted to try out here? I feel like there's a lot of part-time jobs that are not that conventional in Spain. For example, the, the one that I'm doing right now is basically being like a promotional image. It's not really a model, but it's basically like portraying a character. Mm -hmm. And I'm being the textbook character of the language school from my university, which is Sogan University, and it's definitely a very fun job. And I've also realized that a lot of, a lot of Korean students do a kind of part-time job that is called Tokyo, which is basically being the professor's assistant. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of different jobs that I didn't really see in my home country. And in my case, well, I would definitely want to explore more more ideas and different kinds of jobs but I would say that my preference right now is mm -hmm. just graduating as fast as possible to get <laughs> <It's> <laughs> a full-time job. Right, I see. So now it's as more university students are taking a part-time jobs, diverse part-time jobs as we mentioned in our discussion, uh, there's another issue rising. Some are actually facing unfair treatment from their employers. So have you also heard about this, Hyunwoo? Yeah, I unfortunately have and it is a bit of an issue in mm. Korea. Uh, um, a study published by the Korean Confederation of Trade Unions found that 5 in 10 youth, which is a pretty big wow. proportion, um, had experienced some sort of unfair treatment while working part-time, such as minimum wage violations or unwritten employment contracts. So while the current minimum wage in Korea is 9,861, um, some receive less than that or don't receive the paid holiday hours that's mandated by law. Mm, right, so these issues definitely need to be addressed and tackled by the government and relevant uh, organizations. Now, once again, we're talking about how more university students are working part-time during their summer breaks. And we also asked our viewers about what types of part-time jobs are popular among the younger generation in their countries and what would they like to try try if they had a chance to work in Korea. And here is what three of them had to say. If we look at the comments, Benny says some of the most popular part-time jobs in the Philippines are food service crews and ESL tutors that help kids learn English. If I can do a part-time job in Korea, I will be a tour guide speaking in both English and Filipino and a writer for a private company. Slive says in the U.S., the most, po most popular part-time jobs are definitely fast food and retail. Leon says some popular part-time jobs in Singapore include in the service industry like an F FMB, retail or hospitality, or tutoring and doing food delivery services. For part-time jobs, I want to try in South Korea. I'm not sure if there is a demand for it, but I feel like teaching Chinese to South Koreans. Right, so we took a look at what kind of part-time jobs are trending in other parts of the world. And now to explore more whether this trend of university students working part-time is happening elsewhere, we're now going to invite a Japanese Gen Z to our talks right after this break. So today we're joined by Hikaru Suzuki, a Japanese Gen Z. Welcome to the show, Hikaru, and great to have you back. Hi. Thank Hi. Thank you for having me today. Good morning. So Hikaru, our first question for you today is, do a lot of university students in Japan take up part-time jobs during their summer vacation, just like here in Korea? Yeah, I would say yes, because especially for the um, hotels at resort area, they want a lot of stuff for having much what the demand. So they just um, stay at the hotel and working all the time, all the day. And that's the popular like summer break part-time job in Japan. And what kind of jobs would you say are particularly popular among the younger generation in Japan? Um, what factors are important do you think when choosing a part-time job, for example, you know, wage, working hours, or the working environment? I would say the most popular part-time job in Japan is um, cafes or restaurants. 
same as all over the world. And that's because um, they can learn a lot of business manners over there and also hospitalities here. And it looks cool, simply. <laughs> but um, I would say in my case, um, the, my factor of choosing part-time job would be working environment, includes the location and people who I work with. And we've heard that a lot of young people in Japan choose part-time jobs over stable or more uh, uh, regular and traditional jobs. Do you think that is true? And if so, why do you think that happens? Um, I would say it's true to some extent because working part-time job um, is like less responsibility so they don't have to be pressured all the day all night and also they can choose where to work like what time they work so it's more flexible however in my case and also around me um a lot of people seen um working the full-time worker nine to five worker is better than being part-time job because in terms of like um stability and uh, safeness Mm, great. Very interesting insights. All right. Thank you, Hikaru, for your time today. We really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you so much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> right. So as we mentioned earlier in our discussion, trying out various activities during summer break can give young students valuable experiences. And working at a part-time job does not only provide extra cash, but more importantly, teaches responsibility, offers real-life experience, and helps develop professional skills that can't be learned in the classroom sometimes. So. Finally, ask students yourselves, do you guys have any tips or advice on those who are watching our show who are looking for a good part-time job during the break? Yeah, I do have a piece of advice that I'd like to give. Um, the piece of advice I have is to make the most out of the network that you have mm -hmm. um, because it really is a tough job market out there um, and especially for those who are working to uh, look for, for to work part-time as well. Um, I think if you're a student visiting your university's Career Development Center mm -hmm. or CDC can be really helpful if you're looking to you know look for jobs that actually build your career mm, right definitely and one tip from me is I think that it's really important for you to try out various activities part-time jobs for example what Hikaru mentioned working at a restaurant or cafe but as you go through your junior and senior year I think also having or trying out a part-time job that's relevant to your career can also be helpful when you try to find out what suits you and what kind of job or career path you want to have in the future now that's from me and <laughs> what about you Fabio <laughs> I would say whether it's professors, family, friends, letting people know that you want to work and you're available to work is a must. Because I feel like that way people have your interest in mind. Right, they know that and you so want a job. So in case there's, a, there's like an opportunity or something that could you know, be viable, they are going to tell you and they're going to help you as much as they can. So I think definitely that communication could be helpful for everyone. Mm, right, so communicating, finding out a lot of options. And I guess that's all the advice that we can give for you guys and hope our discussion and our tips today help you find a good uh, part-time job if you have plans to work during your summer break. And we, last but not least, we hope you all have a great summer vacation and that the experiences you gain help shape your future. But remember, don't put too much pressure on yourselves. Make sure to enjoy what you're doing, take time to relax, and don't forget to spend time with family and friends. And that's all the time we have for today. But Houston will be back tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. Korea time, bringing you more topics young people are talking about. Special thanks today to Choi Thanks for having me. And Fabio Gonzalez. Lovely to be here. Lovely yeah. to have you both. <laughs> and thank you, everyone, for watching. And we'll see you tomorrow. We are News Generation. Generation.